Okay, let's have a short review on how to show fractions in your number line. Okay, so let's take this number line for example. Okay, so this is a number line. Okay, let's mark each segment or part is starting from zero. So the first one will be zero, the next one will be one, and then two, and three, and four, and if it's longer, you mark five, six, seven, and so on. Okay. So each part is called a unit. A unit can be like in meters, or it could be in centimeters, or it could be in inches, or in feet. So a unit is a universal uh, measure. A unit, a unit is a universal name for measurements. Okay. So from, say for example, from 0 to 1, that is called, that is considered as one unit. And from 1 to 2, that's also called a unit. 3 to 4, that's another unit. 4 to 5, that would be another unit. Okay. So each unit is equal to each other. Alright, so let's look at this same number line again. And so let's mark each line in here. Okay, so that's 0 to 4. Okay, what if each unit is divided again into smaller parts? Meaning from 0 to 1, you have smaller subdivisions, like for example there, between 0 to 1. Okay. Okay, let's, I blow this one up. And so let's let's um, mark the the darker um, the darker parts with zero starting again from zero and then one then this is two and so let's assume with this uh, number line now as you can see between zero and one you have again another subdivision meaning it's divided into smaller pieces and also from one to two is also divided into smaller pieces. Okay, so how are we going to call these smaller parts? Okay, those parts and the ones that does not have. So let's try to do that. Okay, so for example, with this number line, uh, let's mark zero. Well, we mark the darkest part or the bigger, the biggest uh, parts with from zero to one, uh, zero and so on. Okay, so let's start with zero and that will be one and two three and four okay so let's look closely from zero to one as you can see it is divided into three parts or three segments so therefore one part is if if remember our lesson for the fraction if you have one whole and it's divided into three parts one part is called one third that's right okay so how do you show that so as you can see there's an arrow from zero to that first small line that's one segment and then this is the second segment and so that's the third segment so as you can see from zero to one there is, there are three jumps or three smaller parts okay and so the first from zero the first segment we call that one third and the second would be two thirds and of course when you reach one that will be three thirds as you remember from our equivalent fractions a number divided by, the, if the numerator and the denominator are the same, that's equal to 1. Okay? So just remember, every time you have a jump or you have an arrow, just like the purple one, that's one part of a whole. Okay? And let's begin between, zero, between 1 to 2. So that's the first part, this, the first mini-segment, and then the second mini-segment, and then the third mini-segment. Okay? Now, if you can see, as you can see there, I put a big star, or I don't know if that's called a star, uh, around 1. That is because right from now, from this point on, we will start with 1, okay? So the first part would be 1 and 1 third, okay? And the second part, okay, the next one would be 1 and 2 thirds. So if you look closely with this 1 and 1 third and 1 and 2 thirds, it looks similar to the previous one from 0 to 1 only that this one we have one in between so the, if you I mean one in front of them okay uh, from our lesson today that is called mixed fractions okay what do you uh, what do you remember about mixed fractions is a whole number plus a fraction so if you look at this number line before before you started with one and one third you have one 
which is considered as one whole. So therefore, if you start again, that is 1 and 1 third. And then the next one will be 1 and 2 thirds. And this one will be 6 and 2 thirds. If you count all the number of arrows there, you would see that there are 3 purples and 3 blues. And so you have 6 of six one thirds. So that's 6 thirds. Or if you divide 6 over 3, that is also equal to 2. Okay, so let's tr try uh, segment 2 to 3. Again, it's divided into three parts. So from now on, we start with two because we're already done with one. So we start with two. So the first part will be two and one third. The next one would be two and two thirds. And the last one would be nine over, oh, that should be nine over three. I'm sorry, that should be nine over three. All right. Okay, so can you guess what would that, this next one be? If we started, now we have passed the three. So this would have been three and one third. And the next one would be three and two thirds. And the last one would be four or 12, 12 over three or equal to four. Okay, so this is how you number, a, uh, you mark a number line that is, um, Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so let's look closely. How many uh, subdivisions do we have or subparts do we have in between the darker lines or the lo longer lines? Okay, so let's name them. And longer lines would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so between 0 to 1, how many uh, parts do we have in between? Okay, so let, let's count. Let's, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are five parts between zero to one. Okay, so since there are five parts, we call one part as one fifth. Okay, so the first one will be one fifth, the next one will be two fifths, the next one will be three fifths, and then four fifths, and then five fifths. Five fifths again is equal to one because the numerator and denominator is are the same. Okay, if you notice that in the numbering of the fractions all the denominator is just equal to 5 that is the number of divisions you have between your within the unit or between 0 to 1 and of course the numerator um, starts from 1 up to how up to of course 5 because you have five parts all right so let's start with how about uh, from 1 to 2 it is again divided into five parts so let's start uh, marking them okay the first one would be 1 and 1 fifth. Why is that 1 and 1 fifth? Because we already passed one hole. And so we're starting again with the smaller, the, the first smaller uh, part here. And then the next one would be 1 and 2 fifths. And the next one would be 1 and 3 fifths. And the next one would be 1 and 4 fifths. And the next one would be 10 fifths. Okay, so let's discuss this shortly. Uh, if you compare the fractions between 1 to 2 and between 0 to 1, the fractions are all the same except that between 1 to 2 you have a whole number 1 in be before uh, before the in front of the fraction. And you have 1 because at this part of the number line you have already passed 1. Okay, the number 1. Okay, so let's try the other, the next one. In this point, in the purple arrows, you have passed two, so therefore your fractions would start with two, and it's still divided by five, so it'll be two and one fifth. The next one will be two and two fifths, and the next one will be three and three, two and three fifths, and then two and four fifths, and then fifteen over th five. Fifteen over five. If you divide fifteen divided by five, that's three, which is equivalent to three. So now you can write the whole numbers or you can write fractions. They should all be the same. Okay, so can you figure out what these next markings will be? Okay. What if each unit is divided into eight parts? How are you going to call the small markings? Okay, what we did is we have divided into three parts and also divided into five parts. But what about if it's divided into eight parts? How are you going to call the small markings? Okay, how about if it's divided into six parts? And how about if it's divided into seven parts? Okay, so that's a lot of thinking. But I'm sure you can figure that one out. 
Okay, so have fun again.